Oh, YouTube fans, here again. And I figured I'd did the other day American Werewolf in London. Why not this one? Come out, Wolfie, the same there. Dame of popular film. Made a lot of sequels. Very popular. That being The Owling. That's right, The Owling. And after the new take of Werewolf films being, as I just said, American Werewolf in London by John Landis. Another date director. Same director that giving us, let's say, films that say, like, blah, the Piranhas decided to do this one. Their take of a werewolf film. That being The Owling. You've got the same actress that played E.T.'s mummy in E.T. As well as the original Ills of Eyes. It's been in loads. I mean loads of films. Based in this. So it starts off at first. She's sort of like a... Um, plays a card who's sort of like a supporter. A reporter. Supporter. <laughs> okay, right, Ben. Sorry. A reporter. And she's got this big story where she's looking for this evil serial killer called the Pattern Killer. Which, funny enough, if you remember... Gemnins, well, he produced with Steven Spielberg that, and he sort of did a love letter in most of his films. Like some of the actors and actresses appeared in Gemnins. If you remember the pattern killer in The Owling, he had the, like a sticker with a smiley face. There's sort of a love letter in, in Gemnins where they do use that sticker for people that never knew that. So she's looking for this serial killer called the pattern killer, and uh, long behold, she's in this set up, which I do believe was a real life set up, and she goes to watch this naughty movie. You don't see the face, it's all dark, and you've got the idea it's a pattern killer. It, do, it sort of changes, you don't see it, you've got the idea he's going to attack her, you get shot, but there's a twist to it, he's not dead as the film goes on, but you think he is. And to sort the story short, she sort of Having a nervous breakdown, she's stressed out because she was almost going to get killed and all this. So her and her husband decide to go to this Trunty side, see Trunty folk and so on. And everyone's all friendly. You've got this one woman, I believe sadly no longer with us, Macy Best, but in that era, beautiful, stunning. You've got the idea she's a nymphomaniac. And she's got the ox for her husband. Like nice, it's a nice scene in it where she strips off, sells everything. A bit of a bonking scene. And yeah, it's that good film, the owling. It's expensive when it wants to be, it's cheapy when it wants to be, it's hard to fet it, that's word for me, when it wants to be, it's so on. Got another reporter who also appeared in Piranhas and this is off a die, they're looking into the pattern kill off, they don't the sort of things here and there. But they don't work out. And there's a lot of things on the way. A lot of things on the way. So the guy who's the woman, let's say the woman out of Ujiji's mum, he bonks the nymphomania and made that nice to look at. That nice sets the scene on the fire. Before that, he got scratched. He got the idea he got turned into a werewolf. Good to see, but it sort of ruins it a bit. The fake fangs look laughable. Even the one that appeared in Nymphomania. Have you ever seen original outtakings? There's a bit where you can see Gunty for straight face. You've got him doing this shitty tartoon effect. But the film does get a good knot of special effects as the film goes on. The bit, like I say, you got E.T.'s mum. She walks in, she sees the, the pattern kill. Where you find out he's not dead because he used a golden bullet like the mistake they did in American Wealth in London he pulls a bullet out of his head and I've got to admit I've got to fucking admit them effects are brilliant he's changing the bones you can hear the bones crunching you start to see him smile like this and his face is turning out you think some of the effects look similar to American Wealth in London it's because the same director Vic Baker worked on this, but he only worked an half of it, and then he'd think like the same there. American Wealth in London, he did the effects for American Wealth in London, and that's why the rest of them was done by different special effects. And as laughable as it is, when they did the scene where his face is stretching, his face is like that, it's like smiling, and his bones are cunting, and his arms are bulging. The they did that, and I'm not making this shit up, they actually used air pumps with Jorex's. Seriously, I'm not making this shit up. He had to use air bumps with door access. There's original outtake. If you've never seen the owl in the double disc edition, I would check it out. I've got it. Fucking love it. 
and it does all the outtakes and they were bowing his door let's just up to make the bits where his arms are stretching and by accident they over pumped it too much and it blew up and the actor's killing himself laughing who who had this done with a lot of good outtakes in it so don't make them effects are really good really done stunning I will miss them golden days of special effects when it's done packed to death and this CGI shit the way it's money on nowadays. I love the bits, he falls acid in his face and she does a ton of one. There's a good bit before that where her mate is a supporter, a reporter, get about fence there, she gets killed, bites her on the neck, bites her on the juggler. Don't see a lot, but you see what you need to see, a bit of blood. Um the only bit of shitty effect is, so I'll just cut the story short, they all, the werewolves get burnt, right? They're all locked in this shed, they all get burnt. She gets stabbed by what was her husband, because he was turning into a werewolf, he gets killed. She knows she's going to turn into a werewolf. I'm not making this up, she knows that. So she goes and does a report and talking on about werewolves, and all the people think she's off her head. She turns into a werewolf. I've got to admit, it's fucking laughable. She looks more like a fucking hamster. She looks more like a fucking hamster. Even now I'm laughing my ass off. It's both to be sad. She's got tears, go her eyes. The idea the dud guy's going to shoot her with a silver bullet and she's crying the way for But it's just laughable. She's there crying. And she looks more like a fucking hamster. She gets shot. There's a bit of this old bits of the old 30s and 40s werewolf films. The nymphomania, the one that had to call right and uh, says it turns out she got out of dodge, she's still alive, and she says to see can I have um a double burger or a double steak, medium rare, blood air. And she get a bit of chunty music, end of fucking mover, end of mover. But the owl in it's a good one. It's a good one, you know what I mean? It it made a lot of sequels, some not bad, some a piece of fucking dog shit. And so on, it's like Howling 2, right? Howling 2, to cut the story short, come out in 1984. It's not a bad one, I can watch it for laughs and diggles. It's a good comedy, even though it's not supposed to be a comedy. You know what I mean? You've got Christopher Lee, the legend himself, as a werewolf killer. You've got a beautiful blonde in it, big fucking boobs. I mean, it gets the tits out, nice to look at. And that's the only entertainment in it. This bit's where it's laughable, the effects are nowhere near as good as the one that's in this. But it's a good comedy, it's a good time waster. I can watch that one for what it is, a time waster. A good comedy, even though it's not supposed to be one. It's a bit even I'm laughing. Owl in Fee, a piece of dog shit. A piece of dog shit. But again, I can watch it as a time waster. I mean, it's got some good practical effects. Some shit. Story, downbeat. Owl in Four, I thought it was a bore fest. I watched it. A snooze fest. I, I remember even sagging off and saying you can have more fun painting the wall, bully. And you can, because it's boring. Yeah, it's a slow burn, and I've seen other movies like that. What are the slow burn? But this fucking, but the slow burns there, I like that. It's a bore fest. It's done a few good practical effects at the end. I can just fucking fast forward to the end, but this one, the owling. It's a good one. It doesn't get boring. It's suspenseful. Yeah, it's downbeat at the end, but I knew her fucking fate. I knew her fate. But the rest of the movie, for what it is, practical effects I fucking miss. It doesn't fuck about. It's there when it wants to be there. It's suspenseful. The Howling, again, a new look of werewolf films, and this one, the walking, the moving about, the look like wolves. American Werewolf in London, a new look of the werewolf. You could definitely see at that point the werewolf film was coming back. You know what I mean? You had um same there, same there. You had Airwolf. No, not Airwolf. There, that's a fucking serious. I mean, you had Wolf then. Go back, fans, and that based in the moss. You had Wolf, Wolf then, another good one. But this one in eighty one was a good one. But you then have a good one. Fuck it, why not? An 8 star rating. There's nothing wrong with the owling. I do like the fact they kept the original poster, which is eye tonic. You've got that woman and she stats this through this thing. You've got fangs out. You've got the word dead, bid, and bold. The owling. I do respect the tech that original couple that we remember back in 1981. But then it was a good one. Like I say, it lost a lot of sequels that I thought was shit. Owling 2. Good comedy, even though it's not supposed to be. But the original owling. Got no faults with it, but into them, it's smart.
be safe. I'll tell me me on a marathon and other things on the way. Until then, see you later.